Back again with us for the interview is former Attorney General Eric Holder. Thank you again for doing this. Um, you mentioned a moment ago that there were um, boundaries between you and the president in terms of things that you ought not talk about. Mm -hmm. um, where were those boundaries tested the most between you and President Obama? Where was it most difficult to keep the appropriate amount of distance? Well, see, that's the thing. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't difficult with Barack Obama. He's a, a lot of things, and among them, he's a really good lawyer who understands the value of having an independent justice department. Now, there were things that um, I would want to share with him because I knew he was going to be reading about him in the newspapers, you know, the next day, Monday, or, or something like that. Um, the DOMA decision, for instance, the decision not to defend the DOMA that I made, I thought, all right, this is one he can't read about in the newspapers. And so I, on a Sunday at a Super Bowl party, I, I told him, um, this is where we were going to go. This is the decision that I had made. And he said to me, well, I'm really glad, you know, I didn't know how to approach you because this is where I wanted my Justice Department to be. I didn't think it was appropriate to share that um, with hmm. you, but I'm glad that you made that So decision. you presented it to him as a fait accompli, and he said, I'm glad. Right. I, I wanted to suggest to you to do this, but didn't feel it was appropriate. Exactly. And so that, I think, is an example of the kind of relationship that should exist between an attorney general and, um, and a president. There are a whole range of you know, law enforcement issues that I never shared with him where an indictment was going to be brought and he would simply, and people in the White House would simply read about it in the newspapers the next day. When President Obama has, uh, excuse me, when President Trump has publicly and repeatedly expressed anger toward his attorney general, specifically for having recused himself on matters related to the campaign, including the Russia investigation, um, those, ex those public expressions of the president um, to me seem unprecedented because anybody facing investigation expressing right. Right. regret over somebody not being in a position to move the investigation one way or another just seems strange but how did that strike you unprecedented unwise um, and ultimately not helpful to the president um, you know it, 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 it could be argued that it betrays a mindset um, of concern um, and might be said to evince some consciousness of guilt or some concern that um, uh, those who are acting independently might do something to him that is um, negative in the nature and that if his appointed attorney general was still in charge, um, he might not be in as bad a position. So that is, I'm sure his lawyers would have been apoplectic about having that kind of interaction between the president uh, and the attorney general. What about these recent reports that the president has apparently been meeting with potential nominees for U.S. attorney positions? Uh, you were yeah. a form, you were a U.S. attorney in, in D.C. The D.C. U.S. attorney is one of the people who right. President Obama report, uh, President Trump, excuse me, reportedly met with uh, bef before he nominated her. Unprecedented. Um, the way it was done in the Obama administration and the Clinton administration as well, and I think in the, the Bush administrations, um, the highest level person that you spoke to as an incoming attorney general, as an incoming U.S. attorney, was in fact the attorney general. That was it. Um, nobody went to talk to the White House. And why is that? Why was, that, um, why was it structured that way? To, again, ensure that independence so that a U.S. attorney would understand that your boss is the attorney general of the United States. You're not supposed to have any contacts. A U.S. attorney is not supposed to have any contacts with the White House except through the, the Justice Department. And the choices that, as Lee's has been reported, of the people who he spoke to I think are interesting. Two U.S. attorneys in New York, the U.S. attorney in Washington, D.C., and the U.S. attorney in Florida who's got where Mar-a-Lago is. And that gives me some concern that he has decided to have these interactions with the United States attorneys who might possibly be in a position um, to get at him. And what's the correction? <laughs> you know, to hopefully uh, have good people in these positions who will, in spite of the fact that they've had this, uh, these meetings with the, um, with the president, will understand what the nature of their jobs um, is. That's the correction? The hope they're good people? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's, I don't think there's anything that is, you know, legally inappropriate with what the president did, but with so many of the things that he does, it's just not the way things are done. It is mm -hmm. not the tradition, uh, tr traditional way in which things are done within the Justice Department that, that zealously, jealously guards uh, its independence. Do those norms and mores and, and, uh, and to a certain extent rules that uh, were previously seen as being inviolate, which we can tell because they weren't violated before this. Should those things be codified and sort of hardened in a way that we'd never expected to have to do? I mean, yeah. this president is testing the bounds of what's acceptable behavior and, yeah. and changing, the, changing the rules by his behavior. I, I think that might be one of the uh, inevitable and, and perhaps 
positive things that comes out of this, mm. you know, to to put on paper um, certain things that in the past we just did by tradition, um, by good practice. Um, we have seen that if you have a president who has made the determination that he is not going to be beholden to tradition um, and to you know tried and true practices, that maybe we have to put on paper, right? The attorney, U.S. attorney um, candidates meet only with the only with the attorney general, and you can put that you know in, in some form or fashion in the rules within the uh, within the Justice Department. Yeah, those guidelines that were always right. well understood, they maybe have to become hard fences. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be right back with former Attorney General Eric Holder. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.